to end up with a specific person, a specific person of a specific race. That's something that, that kept me up at night. It's like, I don't want to piss off black people. I don't want to piss off white people, yeah. but I'm both of those. You know what I mean? Guys, we are talking to you today, guys, about Bachelor season 25. We have a black bachelor. His name is Matt James, and we're going to talk about his particular journey in the first episode of this show, Making History. Guys, if you are new to the channel, again, like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notifications for more great content like this. And for those of you who are returnees, well, you got the minerals, you got the minerals. Rouse. Don't forget to grab your merchandise, baby. All right, cool. So, hmm. Um, obviously, this is obviously the very first uh, season where a black male is taking the lead and the charge, and that's going to cause, I guess, a lot of stirs and issues for a lot of people. Now, what is interesting um, about this particular season, like I said, is the fact that he made some comments that I think some people were a little bit frustrated by, or a little bit hurt by, or a little bit dumbfounded by. Well, it depends on where you come from, what angle you're coming at it. But he made some comments around that um, in, the, in the tavern. End up with a specific person a specific person of a specific race that's something that that kept me up at night it's like i don't want to piss off black people i don't want to piss off white people yeah. with uh the young gentleman i said the young gentleman the, the guy that he was talking to a couple of his day um but he was saying obviously the fact that you know um there are a specific there's almost like it was ominous shadow of um uh you know enterprises of people wanting a certain thing you know it's like watching one of those shows where there's a dark force working behind the scenes he was t quoting saying obviously that there are some people who want um him to be in a specific type of relationship or a specific type of person meaning basically race okay he said it in such a roundabout way the gentleman next to him had to ask him what do you mean by that you right? end up with a certain type of person yeah and i get that what does that mean? So my mom is white and my dad's black. Mm -hmm. and, right? and what he didn't want, I guess obviously for him, he didn't want to offend or hurt um, or cause a ruckus. And I can understand that because in, in the truth of the matter, you know, we can be judgmental, not just as black people, people in general. And he's got a precarious position, which is that, you know, although he being black, okay, he is um, born in an interracial home. And not only that, his father actually left. And so therefore, um, he was actually raised by his mother, who is obviously Caucasian, right? Um, and so there's going to be obviously a different influence from him. He's going to have both influences. But something that he said, which I guess for people would have been a little bit frustrating, or maybe it would have been a little bit like, what do you mean by that? is when he was talking about the fact that some people have an old-fashioned mindset, meaning I guess he meant that some people do not want to have, um, you know, black love, but it also could mean as well some white folk he knows don't want no black love, you know what I'm saying, white and black love. He, he may have meant that too, so we're not 100% sure, but he said obviously some people want specific race, um, and he didn't actually state who he just said a specific race so neither black people or white people can claim to say that he was speaking about them right i can understand why black people may feel that way because oftentimes it is the case that black males seem to diverge to white females and if you have been watching obviously some of the media lately we saw some comments of what white females may think of black males um but that's neither never here or there the, the, the best thing about this is that obviously he is making history. He is the first black male to lead the bachelor charge. Whoop, whoop. We appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? It's always good for someone to lead the front out here. You know what I'm saying? Bring some flavor up in the house. So he is holding this, um, I guess, this title on his back, which is, like I said, the first black um, bachelor. And in fact, I think one of the girls even mentioned it, or two of them even. You are the first black bachelor. And I think that's so incredible. And, you know, how do you feel about that? You know, I feel a load of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, I... Kristen mentioned it when she was having a conversation with him and she really um, done well, actually, because she asked him how did he feel about it rather than saying, you know, um, solo saying, oh, well done, your first black male, da, 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 and almost feeling like there's going to be a camaraderie between the, between the two of you because we're both black. Um, but she didn't do that. She actually asked him his feelings around it, which was good because you need to get an insight onto how he feel because how he feel going to be important. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so he obviously is feeling a weight of pressure upon his neck, okay? And I'm guessing more than likely, you know, it's, like I said, it's a date, a specific color. But that's beside the point we wanna talk about here today. What I wanna really wanna talk about and dive into is his bio and how he started off the show. 
Because I think that's going to really help us to understand some of his preferences and dating choices. For instance, I did not understand where the kiss for Amber, is that name Amber? Amy Amber came out of? I was confused. I was like, my girl oh, oh, in the blue is sitting down there, literally chatting to you, telling you about her life and the fact she's deaf and in fact that obviously, you know, her family, she's a really family oriented girl. And all of a sudden, my brother, yeah, my brother is just leaning in like the Tower of Pisa, you understand? And just sticking his lips on her. And I was like, bruv, I was mad confused. I said, bro, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute. Where did this come from, sir? Like, how did we suddenly get to that particular level? Do you know what I mean? Um, so I think for me, I was a little bit confused by that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was a little bit like taken aback by that still. So for me, I guess, obviously, when I was, when I watch his uh, bio. I'm working with kids in the inner city, trying to expose them to different experiences in their neighborhood. What was interesting is that there were some several things that were mentioned. Now, we know, obviously, that he's a real estate broker. You know, he loves working with the kids, you know, so he likes to expose the kids to different experiences. Like, he's heavily involved in that. Um, and, you, you know, he I, I'm guessing that reason why he's so heavily involved in the kids situation is because he himself maybe grew up in a home which was broken, like he said. And sometimes maybe you can identify that area of brokenness in children and that pain. You can resonate with it. You can re you, 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 you recognize that pain. And so therefore, there's a push from yourself sometimes to want to give back and help kids in the similar position that you were once in okay now what's important is that he was raised in a christian home this is very important the reason why not just because i'm a christian but because also it means as well that we get to know that he will have some strong moral uh foundation that doesn't mean that he ain't gonna be fornicating or kissing people because he's definitely gonna be kissing people we see that in the in the cutscenes. he's gonna be kissing okay but it does mean that at least the way that he looks at the way to treat people should be in alignment hopefully with the what the fact that the mother taught him correctly in treat others as you like to be treated yourself okay you understand that you treat people with lit okay we're hoping for that to come through so that value system is very, very important. Um, and it came through as we saw him praying, um, you know, at the at the at the house um, to all the girls before they started the proceedings, which set a great tone, I believe. And a lot of women, a lot of the women were moved by the prayer. Right. And moved by his kind words before the prayer. And, you know, I, I want to say as a Christian, especially, you know, you want he never he never said he himself is a Christian. So therefore, you know, he's he's me I'm not going to measure him as a Christian. Um, but what is interesting is that when people do uh you know pray and stuff like that people are cool with it until you start praying the lifestyle you know what i'm saying when i'm saying i'm talking about like when you start living the lifestyle of a christian with the belief and everything it can get a little bit techy father in your holy name i pray amen amen, amen. <gasps> that was so good. okay reverend man <laughs> <laughs> But when you just do a little prayer here or two, you know what I'm saying? No one feel no way. Everybody can run, ride with it because at the end of the day, like it doesn't impede on your lifestyle, right? Um, so that was something I picked up and I noticed that, okay, cool. So maybe there's aspects of Christianity that he likes to take and help with the moral standing and the attitude and the values that he should carry. Cool. A lot of women were attracted to that. They mentioned that they felt they loved the prayer and they were moved by it. So, you know, more, 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 more shout outs to him. What I want to say is obviously that the fact that he, expressed that you know in his household you know he he his parents went through a split um and i wanted to say something like when people when parents go through a split several things can happen so you know the child can get angry at the world or god for causing this um they can they can make them extremely angry towards people uh because they need someone to blame um for the reason why they're in the situation they're in right now another time they can feel powerless they can feel like they've been stripped of all power because they couldn't stop their parents from actually separating or they may feel there's a an era of guilt because they feel like they're the ones that caused their parents to split even though that's not necessarily the case um they may withdraw socially um, and emotionally and I think this is where he's touched on because he mentions that obviously during the, during the point obviously his parents splitting and everything like that he struggled with vulnerability and he's also struggled with commitment sir you struggle with commitment sir okay um, which is going to be very very interesting because as the show goes on and he gets closer how will he react 
Because what's bound to happen is you spend that much time in a house with women and you like them and you find them attractive, you are going to start to like them. And when you begin to like them and they begin to like you, when they start to draw more from you emotionally, are you going to be able to handle it, Mr. Matt James? Okay. So again, one of the reasons why what happens as a cause of parents splitting is it may withdraw the person socially, emotionally, right? Um, another thing is that children may become very wild, OK, um, this is not to say this is the only reason why children become wild, uh, you know, when when girls can, you know, become very sexual, uh, sexually active and man them too can become very sexually active. Sometimes there's things not great in the home. And one of the reasons is that maybe parents splitting and not being have enough attention for that child due to obviously having other kids in the home or their work or having to split time between work, kids and everything like that can be very, very straining. And that child can feel they need a, they have a need or a necessity for love and affection. You know what I'm saying? Or going to wild. You know what I'm saying? Also, another thing is that, you know, children in that, in that state also can feel unsafe. Why? Because they used to have two parents who would look after them, who would give them the emotional care they would need. And now they've only got one parent. So, oh, well, I say they've got one parent. They've got two parents. But what can happen is as that per parent is further away, the physical connection is dwindled. Therefore, there's a feeling of loss in the relationship that they once had with that parent, oftentimes a father figure. And then that can cause what I would say the feeling of the, the, the feeling of being unsafe you know, or feeling unloved because a parent is further away than they were before, um, uh, beforehand. Um, another thing is obviously growing in resentment. Okay. Growing in resentment, um, due to having to pick one side, you know, sometimes you can grow in resentment to, to both your parents for them, for them making you want to choose. Sometimes you grow resentment towards the opposite sex. Cause you feel like their part that, that you're, you are projecting your hurts and your thoughts and your feelings of your parent or the parent who's opposite sex to you onto your future partner. And what you're trying to do is almost change the future that can happen in a lot of relationships as well. And the final point here is you know, um, that, you know, kids can, can try, like, I think that was my final point. The kids can actually try to, um, change the future, but without knowledge, it becomes very difficult. Gotten super close with a woman and you're getting to that point where it's like, should I say I love you? Is he going to say he loves you? I kind of feel myself backing up mm -hmm. because again, I've seen how. A mindset to change it. But due to the fact they don't have the information to do so, they don't make different choices. They make the same choice. And so we want to really focus on it because I think, as he mentioned himself, he's, he missed, he misses, he's missed out on what makes a good relationship due to the fact his mother and his father both split apart, right? And it was, on, it was honestly a very vulnerable moment when he mentioned the fact that, you know what, due to the fact their relationship was, it was a certain way, it's shaken him up to the point where he does not, sh he does not know if he wants to be in a relationship. He does, he, 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 as soon as he thinks about getting to that kind of intimacy, he thinks of his parents' relationship and it shakes him. And it stops him from committing, you know. Um, and so the fact that he's struggling to be open and vulnerable, men already struggle with that area anyway. But to add the fact that obviously the situation between his parents impeding on his emotional ability to be able to be vulnerable and communicate is why I believe he chose that as a task for the ladies. And so what he's going to look for and what he's going to what he's going to look for in the end of the sh if he's as uh, emotionally intelligent as I think he is. And I think he is because the way he listens, I, I, I can see that there's some emotional intelligence there. Um, and the fact that obviously he grew up around his mom, he's going to be more in tune with emotions, I believe, as well. My mom did a great job, but growing up in a single parent home, I feel like I missed out on a lot of what it takes to be in a good relationship in the past. I've struggled with opening. Um, but what's going to be really interesting is that when he's looking for that woman in the long term of the show, not immediate, because immediate is all about what I see now and what you give to me. But as he starts talking and getting to know these girls, he's going to be looking for that one, I believe, that will give him an emotional safety. OK, the one that will give him the emotional safety. If he's learned well enough, he will look for the one that will safely, um, you know, safely put his feelings in a secure place. Not one that's going to make him feel like he's taking an absolute mad risk and he's going to be hurt by it. When do you think you were last vulnerable? It's been a while. It's been, it's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. He's going to want that feeling of safety, which is, which is why I believe um, Amber, the girl in blue, 
I hope that's her name, um, is, is probably the one that he kissed. He probably felt the most safest around her. Not only that, I believe also Brie kind of brought that as well with the whole, both my parents also too were interracial and yes, they also split early as well. So I, I identify what you're saying. There's an attachment there because he can feel safe because she's, she's gone through what he's gone through. Therefore, um, uh, she will have a similar mindset to me kind of thinking, right? Um, the same thing also, I believe with Rachel, I think the way that Rachel was so honest and earnest and even me watching it through the screen, I felt, I felt safe with Rachel. I don't know what it is. It's just her tone, her look, everything about her felt soft. You understand? No, 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 I'm not going to play with it. You know, I'm going to do another video where I talk about my top five. And, you know, like, like my top five, number one is, is Kayla. You know what I'm saying? You know, my black goddess blood. But when I saw Rachel on the screen and the way she was talking, I just felt, I felt safe and I felt invited. And I felt like when she was talking, even though she was talking about herself, I felt, I felt pretty calm in it. At that moment, we don't know how they're gonna be later on. You know, when people want to get what they want to get, they can put on a facade. Okay. So you know the the task that he set for the women to obviously you know um, make sure that obviously they speak their vulnerabilities. I think also was a way of also being able to see who's hard and who's soft. Because any girl that's going to be hard, he's gonna he's gonna lose interest in. Why? Because that's a chance of being hurt. If if that person's closed up like a clam, then you're kind of dangerous to me. But if you're open and you're vulnerable, then maybe you're more inviting because maybe then you can accept my flaws. But if you're hard, it means that you potentially won't be able to accept the flaws very well. This is not a guarantee. I'm just kind of giving a bit more of a background in terms of how his choice may begin to be impacted by who he feels is being vulnerable to him. Things that I challenged uh, the women with was being vulnerable. And uh, I felt like you were everything that I am asking of these women tonight. And because remember, his fear here is being hurt. His fear here is being, I'm guessing, abandonment, even though he mentioned it as well, abandonment, due to the fact, obviously, his father also left as well, right? So there's going to be some fear there of attachment a little bit, right? So you're going to, you're going to want a woman that's going to make you feel secure. You're going to want a woman that's going to make you feel safe. You're going to want a woman that's going to make you feel like you've got security with her. Anybody who does not promote that will not be in your line of sight after a while, because once you start talking to them, I get to know you. I look beyond now the buffness and the cute dresses and everything like that. I'm going to look at you specifically. What can you offer me? Remember, he's also... Look, most of us are broken individuals, okay? Many of us haven't got a secure attachment style. Let's be very real, okay? So we're going to be looking for people who are going to be able to compliment us um, and, and, and be able to keep us safe emotionally, okay? Which is why I think, like, Kate is great. I don't think she's going to be the long term because Katie right now is promoting sex. Kate is not going to be the final buck shot because she's promoting sex. And unfortunately, when you promote sex, um, especially in this part, it's going to look like it's transactional. You're about to use me. And in this particular regard for him, it may be funny right now, but I think in the long run, unless she sows something else, and she quickly changes that image, he's gonna look at it as, okay, this girl just really wants the sex. That's not a safe bet for me. It's not a safe hedge. I think that is reason, I really do think that's why he chose Amber to give the rose to and to kiss, the girl in the blue dress, because she obviously was giving him something of some safety and security. Honestly, he really is looking for that type of girl. And that's that's fine, that's normal. We all, we all look for that place where we feel like our head can rest. Um, you know, there's a story in the Bible, which is Samson and Delilah, the reason why Samson, you know, felt the reason why Samson was able to be taken advantage of was because he felt so comfortable in Delilah's lap blood. Yeah, like we all know so the Samson and Delilah, the Delilah that betrayed him. But the thing was, her lap was soft. It was hella soft. When man rested his head, it was like velvet. You understand? When you rested his head, it was like, you know, Durex tissue. Like it was soft. You know what I'm saying? All right. I said Durex. Is it Durex or Durex? Durex. <sighs> Okay, but you know what I mean? Like, it was soft, yeah? And and that's the emotional representation. That's the physical representation of the emotional. I need to be able to rest my head on you. I need to be able to recline on you and feel like I'm safe as a man. I, I need to be able to let my guard... Remember as well, he said... He struggles to let his guard down. So any woman that's hard is, going to, is not going to allow the guard to be up. You know what I mean? You know, I think... Who was it? Was it, was it, was it Sydney? It might have been Sydney. Sydney mentioned, oh, you know, I'm quite, sometimes I can be quite like hard, isn't it? Right? I can have my guard up in a sense. And I was like, girl, if that don't come down, you're going to be out soon. 
Okay, you're going to be out soon. Because he needs somebody who's going to allow him to put his guard down. He's going he's gonna to need someone. He's going to need someone who's going to be able to lower the guard down so that he can be free to be himself in totality without fear of rebuke, laugh or embarrassment. So, you know, guys, I don't know who that is exactly, but I definitely saw that from Rachel. I guess obviously Amber brought that to the table as well. Saw that from Brie as well. Maybe a little bit of Kayla, but I'm not really sure if that he got that from her. Um, but, you know, he's he's definitely looking for a type of girl. So we'll look, wait and see and see how the show goes. Guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe. You click on that bell button for notification of the what up lows. And we appreciate you guys. Stay locked and stay loaded.